All right, cool. So we left off last Saturday. No, not last Saturday. Last Wednesday, which was hold on. That was all right. Last Saturday, that was the twelfth. Right, so let's see. Let's just highlight this little range. Um, so, for the most part, we're pretty much right where we started from where we left off on Wednesday. And the thing about this now is we've cleared liquidity and we've shown bullishness to, you know, to give some sort of pullback, which is what we've been waiting for for like what? Uh, month and a half month no yeah pretty much a month and my only issue with this is that we really don't know how deep this will go um, honestly I think it's time to finally see a retracement because obviously we're gonna pay attention to structure right right we have liquidity sitting up here and we created technically a new low right not really um, not really too you know convincing but the thing is is that bearish structure has maintained itself here bearish structure has maintained itself there right so assuming that structure held there we can assume that we should continue lower which we did right which is what we were talking about with your usd and we'll get that we'll get to that in a couple minutes <coughs> <clears throat> right whereas this is a new target that new target was smashed right so now due to structure rules that means that we should create a lower high to then continue to create a lower low right but obviously that didn't happen right we now have a solidified low after taking liquidity Right, we now essentially broke a previous structure point from an intraday standpoint. Right, I just consider these wicks to be significant because bef right before these wicks, we just saw the full meltdown. That has now been taken. Right, we created a range, pulled back, right, corrective structure, and we're now showing bullishness to the upside, which means that structure has technically now shifted to the upside, right? And the nearest target from there will definitely be, you know, your next level of liquidity, which is there. Will this hit? Probably. Um, honestly, it probably won't be too pretty, but I do feel like it'll hit there eventually. And supporting this too, we're looking at closures, right? As soon as we took out previous liquidity, we had a bullish engulfing pullback and another bullish engulfing. So if you pay attention to your weekly, Right, that looks extremely bullish to me. I don't know about you guys, but that looks extremely bullish to me. And <clears throat> it really looks like we're reacting off of this weekly inefficiency here. Right, this isn't really significant to me. I just want a reason to, you know, continue to support this bias that we might see a pullback. Right, honestly, I don't expect it to be too deep. Um, we might finally get that structure point there, or we might even get, you know, a structure point back up here. Right, but just based off how you know weak the corrections have been, right? It's honestly I'm not you know too optimistic. Right, the only thing we can do here is honestly try to look for another continuation, right? Because <clears throat> unless we get a very you know bullish monthly closure and then a very bullish you know three month closure, which is at the end of next month. You know, then then I will see, you know, what could potentially happen because there's always the scenario where you're on a monthly time frame and this could happen. Right. From a monthly perspective, this can always happen. This can give a reaction that is extremely bullish, closes back up here. And although it has 39 days, that's very possible. And if that happens, then somehow we're going to see bullish dollar because at the end of the day, <clears throat> all this could be is one fatal continuation flag, right? And I'm judging that based off of two very impulsive six-month candles here.
right? So obviously this isn't too, too important um, unless we do get that, you know, that quarter closure to the upside and or even a very bullish um, closure to this month. And then, you know, which is followed by very bullish closures on the weekly time frame. So it's it's interesting to see. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too inclined for you know, a bullish bias on e on DXY because I'm so much more bullish on EU. Whereas here, let's see. One thing that stands out there, that wick, right? That's what that's reacting off of. Right, why that wick? On a weekly time frame, you can tell that that wick, where is this? This wick gave one sudden or one subtle push to the upside before continuing down. Could potentially have filled a previous inefficiency. Um, and then from there, all that created was a point of reference, which then led to the pullback. But for the most part, right, the only thing that interests me here from my daily time frame is that previous wick potentially find something down here potentially a candle of interest but honestly if we're looking here as a potential candle when we're looking at a daily time frame right that is the previous structure point and that is like a 95 percent retracement that's coming down with pretty strong momentum now so all those structures still bullish right if we come back here with significant momentum, we'll probably shatter right through it. And also something that's very, very, you know, key to reference here is this structure point here, because right before this structure point, we created the last high and that structure point was already taken out. So unless, you know, we react from here and break this previous high, this should, you know, either continue lower or have that pullback. So it's, it's not really, you know, it doesn't look like this wants to go higher. It really looks exhausted from a daily time frame, right? Notice how this has a whole lot more structure to it than just this simple pullback here, right? So which is why this was a continuation and we might now see a pullback from this, right? Does that make sense? Right, so it's not really anything too complicated, right? But notice what I'm doing here, guys. Notice what I'm doing to analyze my direction is, I'm gonna annotate. What are the only time frames I've used? Right, I see like everybody's sending me messages about being confused. And the only chart that they send me are something like this. And obviously, don't take this the wrong way. Where automatic here. And the charts that I see are stuff like this. Whereas, look, bro. Continuation and structure, continuation and structure, continuation and structure, continuation and structure. Why didn't this become my POI to then go here? I get asked stuff like this and I'm just like, bro, are you serious? Like, for one, why are you on this time frame sending me a full analysis? Two, if you zoom out, let's see. This is annoying. If you zoom out, right, the last time we saw any type of pullback, let me go to the 30 minute here, here, caused this whole move downside, or even you could even consider back up here, right? But this was the last significant pushback before we just came back. Then this is the next structure point that then created this here. This is the structure point that created this here, right? So when we're looking at an overall perspective, you're still playing inside 
Actually, let me take out the drawings. You're actually still playing only inside of this recent ranges, discounted pricing, right? Whereas you should be looking for potentially equilibrium or premium, right? Obviously, this, you know, was a trade that I took yesterday. It was like right at London Open. <clears throat> and that was derived here, right? That previous wick, right? That is just subtle. And then it caused a move to the downside. So that creates a potential reference point. Right? All that is is a reference point, and you want to see what happens here. So, right here is actually a second's time frame play. Right, this is actually a, a second's time frame play, right? But your more preservative, your more conservative um, approach is obviously break of structure, inefficiency, 2.5 pip stop, you know? So it's like, there was an eight minute SE in that wake, really? Let's see, don't have that one. Ah, I see. Okay, perfect. Right, either way, it's still pretty much the same principle. If you're being patient and waiting for whatever it is, because yeah, that didn't hit 50%, I believe. No, it didn't. Right, so either way, that's all it takes is finding a reference point that's, you know, obviously derived from H4 plus and then, you know, finding your setup, which, you know, is pretty straightforward, right? It even tapped here into a volume, right? After break of structure, it even came back into the open of the candle, which means there's probably a 30 second, 15 second SC there. And that makes your stop even smaller. Yeah, two pips. Higher time frame bias, yeah, exactly. Higher time frame bias, lower time frame refinement. Um, I am gonna make like a full review on this, just because I feel like it's very educational. Um, obviously, everybody was so confused here, right? We thought this was a break of structure, but remember when we were here, what I said about liquidity being taken and that daily structure is still intact, right? Which then created a higher high, right? It's all structure there, but that's like kind of. I don't want to say advanced structure because that sounds kind of corny. Um, just that's just, you know, using structure to its full capacity. I'll just put it at that. You make it simple, bro. Why don't you? Let's see, I different tells like yes. <clears throat> Monthly, weekend, daily. Oh, Aaron's on here, bro. I'm going to respond to your text after this call. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> I'm so bad with my phone. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, there isn't, like, there isn't anything crazy to it. I try not to zoom in until I find, until I'm looking for a BOS. That's fine. You know, if that works for you, then that works for you. Obviously, at the end of the day, trading is speculation and perspective, right? We're playing a game of probabilities. That's all it is. Right, all it is is playing probability with your confirmations that you have refined with time, that you have tested with time, and just go from there. My trend line. But yeah, does anybody have any questions? That's pretty much all I have for today's uh, little lecture. Hopefully, I, we should be getting back to our regular schedule this week. Um, I probably won't do a Zoom. Um, I won't do a Zoom the second, but I'll do a Zoom the sixth, and that's because the first I have surgery, so I'm gonna be in bed for three days. 
What's your settings on your ranked angle? <laughs> Here you go, bro. Right, mine look pretty great. You see, I like mine. Like, I like my colors, bro. But now I see everybody on Instagram using this. And I'm just like, bro, like, are y'all serious? Like, everybody has the same colors. Everybody has gray and black candles. I got this from a member. I forgot who it was. I got these colors from a member in the old Visionaries group. Um, who had it? Oh, I don't remember. But this was like back in November, and now everybody has the same colorway, and it kind of pisses me off. But here you go, bro. So my background. What the fuck? No, there's no way. It's 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 this color right here. Yeah, there you go. It's this color. And it's like right in between the purple and the blue right there. And then I just alternate. I just keep the same uh, whatever this is. But I change it with color. And I like this like this because I can see the candles through the square. So it's, you know, it doesn't get in my way. Yeah, do uh, you guys need anything else? I know some people might want this. These are the TSI. Setting on Fib. It's just 50%, bro. All of it is is reference. I don't understand why you said DXR looks bullish on weekly. No, I, I never said it looks bullish. Oh, 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 you're talking about this. Not on weekly, I said on monthly. Or six month, I'm sorry. Because if we're looking at structure, right? We're looking at position structure here. Um, I'm definitely going to make another structure video for you guys soon or whenever, um, you know, the website gets fixed. Um, obviously, right, we're continuing lower. Right, potential structure point there, right, highs here, right, we've now created higher lows, higher low here. Or lower, I mean, solidified low here, higher low here. Dude, this mouse is pissing me off. Solidified low, higher low, higher low, right? Higher low, higher low, right? Technically, that's how structure would play there. But obviously, the idea here is momentum, right? And that's what could be the catalyst that even takes out this low and then creates a full-on bear market. Right. Obviously, the first sign that we're potentially, you know, going to start being bearish on this fully, fully bearish on this was this sign from uh, early this year, March. Right. Yeah. March. Right. And that created the momentum that is currently going. But I'm not trying to guess this low. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Pretty much is I'm not trying to guess this low. So if it's time for pullback, I'm going to chill, you know, I'm going to allow this to retrace, potentially even give us, you know, premium pricing again and go from there so i wouldn't say it's bullish it's bullish based off you know obviously based off of overall structure but the fact that we weren't able to take out highs here is pretty much could be the catalyst that ends up taking out this low here but technically it's still bullish structure does that make sense yep, yep. Okay. okay it's clear thank you thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. how do i find a tsi indicator who made it i have no clue i know paul um Paul was the person that put us on all that. I don't know if he's on the call today. No, he's not. Paul put us on that indicator. Uh, let's, uh, I don't even know where to find indicators right here. My favorites. Trading session indicator. That's what it's called. By Eric Stenberg. What do you think uh, the fundamental reason why dollar would die? Here's the thing, though. We're not going to find out 
what the fundamental reason behind why that happened until after it happens. But the thing is, too, is from what I've heard, um, I don't know if Europe is finally doing better economically. And obviously, the do I mean, the United States is already in recession, but nobody's talking about that. We just got into a recession a couple weeks ago. Like, honestly, let's look that up. Yeah, see? The United States economically officially entered a recession in February 2020. But nobody's talking about that, you know? Like, nobody's worried about that. Because that's obviously election season. Um, so, I think right after election, we'll probably see a fat drop, you know, just because nobody's focused on it. And then that'll probably lead to housing market going to shit. Then we're probably, everybody's going to go back into unemployment. We're still going to be in a pandemic, you know? Like, I don't see a reason to why we should even go up, you know? And that's even shown in the charts, which is why every single pullback has been pretty, you know, pretty weak. GB, you mean, you mean uh, England? Oh, yeah, somebody told me about that. The pound did go in the recession, recession technically. Heard about that. Unless I'm tripping out. Hmm. You see, when you read your structure, it always makes sense. Makes sense. So it could be time anywhere around here. Could start seeing maybe potential with that, but this structure point. Yeah, so I mean, at this point, bro, the whole world's going to shit. Unless you live in, uh, you know, those very, very wealthy European countries, you should be fine. But just make your money off this. The GUSL was dirty. I didn't see that. This. Moving to Switzerland. <laughs> Go for it. Enjoy. I, d I don't know. I, I, uh, wait, did you send charts on this? Um, second conditions. Oh, yeah, he's talking about this. Okay. A spike, a spike. M1 blind candle mitigation. Okay, M1. Let me see if I can find exactly where you. Where was it here? The doji, okay. Was that a bullish doji? Oh, that was a bullish doji. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He referenced that because it filled that. So to be safe, I probably would have done this whole thing here. I would have done this whole move here. Right, because there's a possibility that there could be a 30 second candle here. And there's also the possibility that this could be the candle of interest because that tapped the previous inefficiency there. So that would have been my point of reference. Um, how do you take this out? How do you take this out? Yeah, and that created this. 
So if you really want to get precise with it, if you really, really wanted to be precise with it, let's see. I don't think I can go that far. One to one. Right, if you really wanted to get precise with it, obviously that this, you know, mitigated the inefficiency, but this right here would be the full candle of interest based off of SC rules, which is the fact that this caused the upwards move, which means that there could be a 30 second candle there, which um is where it tapped here you see that so yeah that's pretty cool good study i haven't really i haven't really taken trades like that in a long time i just i don't know i just i haven't done it i've, I've tried to be a lot more conservative but yeah imagine that judging an entire trend shift with a one pip stop <laughs> that's insane one pip range, not even one pip stop. Query could have been a two pip stop, but that's over 200 pips here. Oh, about 200 pips. How much is, uh, how much percent is in taxes? I'm pretty sure it's like 20 something percent here. 20 something to 30 something percent. You guys are actually being talkative today. That's weird. Y'all actually missed me. <laughs> I'm over here struggling with life, and you see Sergio living life in vacation, bro. What an asshole, right? I should have seen Sergio. He went on vacation while I'm over here suffering. Oh, damn. So I guess we're not family. <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm probably getting into the recording there. That's a pretty long recording. Uh, let's see.